Jennifer Senseba from Clean Technica recently posted a fascinating article about how NASA technology, or at least contractors working for NASA anyway, could enable five minute fast charging. Now, at first I was skeptical, but the truth is, this new space technology really could work. And it's a fascinating experiment in how we can learn things in space and apply them to here on planet Earth. The flow boiling and condensation experiment, or FBCE, enables two-phase fluid flow and heat transfer experiments in microgravity. Using the same technology, we could transform our ability to charge electric cars and do it in a fraction of the time it takes today. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back everyone else. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's awesome to have you. Really appreciate your support this year. And we're getting more than a million views a week. So yeah, that's good to see. This new experiment is absolutely fascinating. And actually, it just might work. Space is a tough place to be. People complain online about Texas weather swinging from hot to freezing in mere days or hours. But just a couple of hundred miles above the state of Texas, the swings are much more mild. I mean, look at Mount Everest, right? The weather up there is insane. Near the Earth, orbital space can be as cold as 100 to 150 degrees below zero in the shade. But up past the boiling point in sunlight. I didn't know that. That's a pretty wild swing. But people in spacecraft and in spacesuits or even on the International Space Station don't usually die from those obviously lethal temperatures. So NASA isn't just an agency that's skilled at aeronautics and space, it's also pretty good at heating and cooling things. Now the proof of that is in the fact that astronauts are not boiling to death and they're not getting frozen to death. I mean, to be honest though, NASA isn't really the one sending astronauts up anymore. SpaceX are, and other companies, such as the Russians. However, NASA, or at least their contractors, haven't stopped inventing things when the space shuttle was designed, and they're improving on HVAC technology, in much the same way that Tesla is as well. Many upcoming NASA space missions will need advanced heat transfer capabilities for the thermal control required to execute correctly. Jennifer says that several systems will be relying on this technology, including nuclear fission power, for future missions to places like the Moon and Mars, vapor compression, heat pumps in support of lunar and Martian habitats, and also onboard spacecraft that will need to provide thermal control and advanced life support. I mean, think about how long it would take to get to Mars, right? Yeah, that's what we're going to need. So yes, so that means progress and new inventions are occurring, even for something that's as seemingly, as seemingly mundane as heating air conditioning, and cooling. A team contracted by NASA is developing cutting edge technology that enables space systems to manage proper temperatures much more efficiently and reduce the size and weight of the hardware, which would be really big for EVs. Why? Because moving weight to space is expensive, so cutting back on weight is essential. Now, obviously, the same applies to an electric car. The less it weighs, the more range it gets, with the same number of batteries. Now batteries, when fast charging, generate a tremendous amount of heat. And you can't put a giant air conditioning system from a building onto an EV if you want range. And that leads us to the flow boiling and condensation experiment. A team of researchers headed by Aizam Mudawa and including experts from Purdue University has developed the flow boiling and condensation experiment to enable two-phase fluid flow and heat transfer experiments in microgravity. By utilizing a liquid that is lower in temperature and charging it into vapor, heat can be transferred more efficiently when the liquid being supplied to the channel is subcooled at a temperature well below boiling, that process becomes significantly improved. This new technique of subcooled flow boiling results in far better heat transfer effectiveness than other methods and it could potentially be used to regulate temperatures of systems in space. The FBCE experiment was delivered to the ISS in August of 2021 and began providing microgravity flow boiling data earlier the next year. 
The results from these experiments allow for more efficient designs of future space systems that require temperature regulation. And of course, that technology will flow on to electric cars. And how does this benefit us specifically though, here on Earth? Well, one of the big things that NASA and SpaceX skeptics like to say is that why are we investing all this money to go to space? We don't need it. It's a waste of money. Well, in the case of NASA, they'd have a pretty good point. But obviously, SpaceX is primarily a private company, and they're doing pretty well. However, as is often the case, sunglasses being a really good example, space technology often finds its way back to where it came from and gets used for the benefits of people here on this planet. One of the biggest problems with future EV charging is the power involved to fast charge. Everyone wants an EV that can charge in five minutes or faster. Why not? Much like a gas powered car. But to do that, we require that we send a lot of energy through a cable into the car, put enough electricity through a wire, and it will start generating a lot of heat. Unless you make the cable massive, thick and heavy, even then it's still going to generate a lot of heat. And that's not going to work out well if you want people to be able to charge their own EVs. I mean, realistically right now, the upper limit of fast charging on cars is about 450 kilowatt based on some of the Chinese EVs that can do this today. But getting beyond that point is going to require new technology. NASA's technology could provide the answers. Mutawa's team recently used the sub-cooled flow boiling principles they learned from the NASA FBCE experiments during electric vehicle charging with this new tech. Dielectric or non-electrically conducting liquid coolant is pumped through the charging cable to capture heat generated by current carrying conductors. Sub-cooled flow boiling not only allows Mudawa's team to deliver 4.6 times more current than any other available charger on the market today, but also removes up to 24.22 kilowatts of heat in total. Clearly, this is the solution to fast charging. Purdue proved a new charging cable can provide 2,400 amperes of power, significantly more than the 1,400 amperes that NASA estimates will be required to charge an electric car in five minutes. I mean, this, particular, this kind of technology could actually one day enable us to charge an electric car from, well, 10% to 100% in about two and a half minutes. That's crazy. Now, this obviously will eliminate one of the sticking points that naysayers bring up. EVs, it takes too long to charge. As EV fast char chargers get quicker and car chargers and battery charging capabilities can speed up, there will be one holdup and one bottleneck, and that is the cables themselves. But this actually solves that bottleneck. However, Jennifer says this isn't the only obstacle. Obviously, that level of fast charging isn't the only thing keeping five minute charging from becoming a reality. Battery technology, electrical infrastructure, and charging stations will all need upgrades. All of those issues can be worked out by other researchers though, and they are right now. The other issue is that for many anti-EV people, it's just an excuse. You can provide an experience that's easier and better than gas powered cars in every single way they'd still come up with some reason not to embrace new things and change. For a lot of people, change is just too much. It doesn't matter if it's the smallest change in the world, they simply can't handle it. It's an emotional thing. Change is hard. It's uncomfortable. Well, for most of us. Some of us seem to be adapted better to it. Others, not so much. Many people are set in their ways or they have weird political reasons for not making the switch. However, the thing to keep in mind is here. Most charging happens at home, more than 90%. So that's probably what I'd keep in mind. For people who live in apartments, there are definitely solutions. I've seen governments around the world building out fast charges and charging points on city streets all over the planet. That I believe will be the solution more than any fast charger or fast charging cable. But this certainly is exciting. And it's another way that technology, in particular space technology, is changing the world right here. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.